This is the Gridfinity Modular Organizer, a myriad of magnetic mix and match modules that you make, mount, and modify. Today we're featuring some seriously debased base plates, the single most over-engineered solder stand, and a clever model mashup that creates storage from thin air. The best part? The entire system is absolutely free. If you have a 3D printer, a pile of filament, and an open mind, you have everything you need to turn your desktop clutter into right angle clutter. Ladies, gentlemen, and cyborgs, welcome to the second Gridfinity showcase here at Voidstar Lab. Gridfinity is growing more Gridfinite by the day. As of November 2002, there are over 750 compatible models by hundreds of designers. There's really only one place you shouldn't put a Gridfinity in a gift box. Giving someone a Gridfinity might as well be saying, you are such a slob, the only way you could ever put your stuff away is if I were to make you a custom shaped slot for it. This Chris Mahana Quanstavis don't give a Gridfinity. Give him something classy, like today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club of tasteful, top quality tools, toys, and treats. They sent me three fresh boxes to show off, but you know what? I'm still using the last ones. The cold brew carafe from the concentrate kit has a dedicated place in our fridge. The aged kit is currently infusing my favorite bar's best cocktail. And the flip knife from the stealth box is missing actually. That's how stealthy it is. Let's take a look at our first spicy new box. And by spicy, I'm talking tacos. The head show kit is a taco night supreme featuring a stainless steel rack, handmade lava rock molcajete, and a kit to brew your own hot sauce. Woo! Next up is the smoked box. Mix up something strong, pile up the super fine hickory chips, give it a blast from the hefty culinary torch, and seal it all beneath the handsome glass cloche. What could be more wintry than the sumptuous smoke of a crackling fire? Drinking it. Finally, the Nakiri box, containing nothing but the eponymous Japanese vegetable annihilator. It's a perfect choice for culinary casuals like yours truly, who just cannot get uniform slices to save his life. 90% of the products in bespoke post boxes come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. Your recipient starts by taking a brief quiz that highlights interests like outdoorsy stuff, the sauce, or the other sauce. Each month, Bespoke starts by sending a preview and it's up to the recipient whether to keep, swap, or skip it at no charge. I was explicitly instructed to read the following sentence verbatim. <clears throat> Each box of awesome has around $70 of value, but you only pay a fraction of the price. To get 20% off your first mm box of awesome, click the link in the description and enter Friedman20 at checkout or go to bespokepost.com slash Friedman20. Enough shilling, back to the grid. I put out the call on the Voidstar Discord and the Gridfinity subreddit and got dozens of awesome suggestions. Our first category is entitled, These Goddamn SD Cards Jiggle Free Every Time I Put the Friggin' Calipers Back. Ah! A few items from previous episodes had problems, which we will now rectify. <laughs> Wrecked them. Last episode's SD card holder was designed for density, not jiggle proofing, so I pivoted to the SD card holder Rolodex by Tetralite. Youngins, this is what a caveman's contact list looked like. And they were all cavemen. Gender wasn't invented till 2013. A spinning flapping Ferris wheel looks kind of goofy, but it's actually a really clever way to index your cards. It doesn't just hold a lot of them, it's also easy to search. The SD card brackets spin freely and uh, they do feel a bit loose, though nothing has escaped despite vigorous roll of dexterity. Tetralite actually designed this to stand alone, so I made a replacement base that adds Gridfinity sockets. Last episode featured an X-Acto knife holder, and while the model itself was fine, there's nowhere to deposit spent blades. If I know anything about us humans, it's that we will always take the easy option over the safe option. So before your mama lacerates herself cleaning your maker dungeon, print fake Spenny's razor blade disposal box. That lid is supposed to fit permanently, because once the bin is full, you just throw the whole thing in the trash blades and all. I do wish this was a little smaller, I don't run through this many razor blades, but losing Using a couple grid slots is better than tetanus. Speaking of Tetris, take a look at these Tetris shaped storage blocks. Not even yours truly is free of sin. My marker holder was simple, but it's impossible to get the markers in the back from the front. My tweezer rack looked spiffy, but it was far from efficient. 
So enter Nishihara's rotating organizer basin cup system. Man, that's a tongue twister. This mouthful is a cylindrical organizer that spins freely on a ball bearing turntable with inserts for pins, screwdrivers, riveting tools, tweezers, and more. These things wobble a little, but this is still a highly practical and versatile design. You know what's smarter than dangling tweezers to see what's what? Just labeling them. Ah. My worst Gridfinity contribution by far, my stupidest design, arguably something that's made Gridfinity worse for everyone, was my weighted base plate that I put in the initial release. This design guzzles filament, it takes eons to print, and it drapes saggy bridges across those recessed slots, rendering the headline features, tire weights, and rubber feet mostly unusable. But the worst part is that I didn't think to add a way to attach plates together. Turns out that presents a big problem for people with small printers. Kyle Warren went back to the drawing board and created the screw together base plate. His, this, I don't, can I assume someone's gender if their name is Kyle? No, there are girls named Kyle. What? Re, what? This design keeps the mounting holes, magnet slots, and rigidity of my design, but ditches the weights, the feet, and most of the bulk. Most importantly, Kyle added holes around the perimeter to tightly bolt or pin adjacent plates together. They sized this for American 440 screws, though I used M3 hardware, and it immediately became the foundation of my daily driver workbench setup. Two warnings. First, this uses 5x2mm magnets, not your standard 6x2. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Second, those corners want to curl more than a bodybuilding octopus. That was originally a Ben Shapiro joke, but it didn't work because it's the toes that do the curling, not Ben. Last episode, I featured a holder for the Pine Soul, the seriously underpriced open source soldering iron that, in the interim, has fully replaced my Hakko FX888. This thing's replaceable tips go from room temperature to soldering iron hot in six seconds flat, but I've since discovered that it takes much longer for them to cool down. I ended up recommending a holder that uh, kind of aims a hot sharp tip upwards where it can burn your wrist and melt its way through your base plate. It's a good thing no one ever gets held accountable for anything anymore. I made a pine sole soldering stand a few months ago using armature wire for heat resistance, but the problem with that design is that the wire has to be bent by hand. This is an unthinkable taboo in 3D printing culture. I searched the workshop for something heat proof, and I found MKUltra's encoders from the last episode, specifically the little silicone dab jars they came packaged in. I usually solder at 320 degrees, and these or I only say they can handle 230 Celsius, but even crappy silicone is such a good insulator, the pine sole will time out and shut itself off long before enough heat can build up to start doing damage. One of the pine sole's best features is the hot swap tips, but if you're as impatient as yours truly, that swap is a little too hot. But check this out. Loosen the screws, shove this thing in, rip out the handle, and the hot business end stays behind. While you select and snap in a fresh tip, a bit of Rube Goldberg bullshit drops the old one to make room. There's a bit of a quirk with this design, and that is the center of gravity is off the base plate, so if you leave out the magnets or screws, the stand can tip itself over. Remember, everyone is going to pick easy over smart, so I extended the base by an extra slot to add some cantilever relieving plausible deniability. I made this thing a functional base plate with magnets and screws, so add a 1x1x3 bin and your solder stand has a little soldering sponge. Combine that with the bottle from the last episode and you have yourself some quick refills. If you're not the spongy type, I made an adapter for the Hakko 599B brass wool tip cleaner. Wow, everything's got a friggin' mouthful of a name in this episode. You know what I always say, if your tip ain't shiny, you'll solder like Heine. You know what else I always say? I got carried away and made too many Gridfinity items. A while ago, I caved in and got one of the Miniware DT71s. This thing is like a multimeter and signal generator built right into a pair of tweezers, and I love it. The problem is that the charger is this awkward sperm-looking monstrosity, so I designed this special storage block that docks the whole kit, keeping it in prime charging and or grabbing position. I even added this little hidden pocket on the back to store the replacement probes, although honestly, I don't understand how you could ruin the probes without, like, 
exploding your hand because this thing puts the batteries in the arms of the tweezer. It's innovation. Normally, this is where I would go off on a tangent that awkwardly backs into a call to like, comment, and subscribe, but today is different. Twitchy Liquid 64 from the Void Star Lab Discord created Gridfinity.xyz, a community supported unofficial homepage complete with catalog, FAQ, and rather nice dimensional infographic. So, a humongous thanks to the entire community and everyone who's contributed. That's the action I'm calling on you for to do. Check out gridfinity.xyz and add your work to their catalog. I immediately regretted how much harder I made that job when I decided to add the lightning round. Today's forecast, three rapid fire storms of prints too useful to skip, but too straightforward to get a whole paragraph. Round one. Cubicle storage for your office cubicle. This ruler holder by A. Trimble TLR was built for your measuring sticks, but also holds circuit boards, cards, drafting tools, and more. Print two of them for balance or don't, I don't care, I don't even know who you are. This scotch tape dispenser by Justinus Petkoskis has serrated tape cutting teeth printed right into its really clever design. Just remember to brace the base plate or you might pull off more than just tape. Finally, Adorus made this rack for Chris Wilcode's fidget toggle switches. Satisfying as these are, using them in an actual office will get you fired, fired at, and or set fire to. Second round, the answers to your nerdiest first world problems. Does your phone sit flat on the table not charging? Print this phone cradle, tape down a key charger, and now it's not flat and yes charging. Who designed it? Some cringe ass YouTuber. Do you want to do naughty things to a gadget that's glued and or clipped shut? Print this spudger holder by Orax, fill it in with iFixit's finest prying tools, and go ham. Just remember to say, I'm in. Do smelly vagrants keep kicking your doors down and murdering your toadies? Print a Gridfinity dice tray by Penguin Prince, print the deliberately unfair dice by Amatulik, and print the Bic Lighter tray by RoboRob to give their character sheets a Viking send-off. Final round! Meta Gridfinity Meta Accessories. Accessories for your Gridfinity accessories. Gaze too far into the navel and Frederick Nietzsche will tell you to get back on topic. Divider bins are narrow, but you're a clumsy oaf. Shake your mix nuts through the Sortfinity, a stack of plates with increasingly narrow holes that automatically sort small objects by diameter. If you want to solve this problem for good, print the Gridfinity funnel by jewels and pipe your poop into its proper group. Magnets are fiddly and you're still an oaf, so grab a glue up jig by DIY bread and the base plate magnet jig by K. Mia's Thre Wow, I even wrote down a phonetic spelling of this and I still f***ed it up. Both have a magnetic frame to hold the discs in position and a pusher plate to ram them down. Also consider Ben Kreshi's base plate magnet jig, which pulls the magnets in from the other side. It's much easier to use, but a little too weak for those thick printer mount base plates. I designed the Gridfinity models in Fusion 360, but you're not just an oaf. You're oafen source. Shout out to Canatech and their Gridfinity Rebuilt. This is a comprehensive of open SCAD port of the divider bins, base plates, and templates that boasts exceptional documentation and attention to detail. Open SCAD is notoriously finicky, but the hard work is already done for you. All you have to do is load the script, change a few parameters, and you can generate a huge variety of Gridfinity gear, including wild freeform divider bins that my files can't do at all. But the best improvement is the Prusa style stepped holes, which prevent that notorious saggy magnet loop. That is something I really Really need to bring back to my designs eventually. Nag me in the comments. The lightning round is over. Our final batch of featured prints are base plates, but these are anything but based. Case in point, the Gridfinity Nerf Rails base plate by Captain Autismus. There is a big problem with this thing, and it's not just the utility of neatly organizing your belongings on a toy firearm. The problem is this is sized for Nerf Rails, not Picatinny Rails. You can't put this on a fancy pants printed blaster. Only off-the-shelf toys for babies. Speaking of cutie patootie Gridfinity gear, allow me to introduce the Gridfinity drawers by Machena 56 k These are actually kind of useful for storing cut tape and other items, but they're not the cute part. The cute part is the tiny base plate. 
but what could that fit? That mini base plate fits the mini Finity, a set of quarter scale bins that are a bit too tall because it is physically impossible to properly clean up these tiny sockets. They are too small to store anything. They are way too small to get anything back out. And I think they're the cutest thing ever. Our next model attacks the biggest problem with the entire Gridfinity system. It occupies physical space. What do you do when you cover your workbench, you saturate your printers and your drawers are stuffed from coast to coast. Stop buying maker stuff. Pfft. You get your grids off the ground and onto a wall-mounted base plate. Not last episode's wall-mounted base plate, the real wall-mounted base plate. The stackable wall-mountable Gridfinity base by Austin L. Jensen 694 is at 45 degrees. Why did they make this? Oh, and they cargo culted the slots from the weighted plate. I want the real wall-mounted base plate. Perfection. Ashley I-100's Gridfinity Wall Rack is a Shao Tucker baseplate shelf chimera that screws directly into your wall, no pegboard, no nothing. And yes, drywall anchors are 3D printable. I particularly like these notches for aligning more wall racks. They're subtle enough to miss if you're not using them, but they still preserve those crispy right angles as your Gridfinity metastasizes across the drywall. The screw holes are countersunk, there's enough headroom to reach into the bins, and look, no copy and pasted vestigial weight holes. But this only prolongs the inevitable, because what do you do when you run out of wall? Kriggy's got you covered with the Visa mount shelf. Just bolt it onto a monitor arm and you can put your most important tools everywhere. <laughs> The multifunction arm mounting system by Ross to P is a chunky articulated contraption that lets you position a book, tablet, or perhaps a Gridfinity wherever you'd like it. Unlike a real Visa arm, this thing doesn't have the springs and pistons to support a 17 pound monitor. Nothing needs support, but it's basically the perfect shape for curling off the bed. A lot of internal stresses in today's prints, uh, even more in the printer himself. This is one of those models that includes 3D printed hardware, so you you can actually make this without any nuts or bolts, just lots and lots and lots of filament because this thing is way bigger than it looks on screen. One of the full size alternate arms trades the triangular trusses for a hex pattern compatible with Rasta P's honeycomb storage wall. You know what slots into the honeycomb storage wall? The honeycomb Gridfinity shelf by Svobs. Nothing says Gridfinity like putting more Gridfinity on your Gridfinity except putting a mini Gridfinity on the Gridfinity Gridfinity. As we approach the end of today's video, I should warn you that too much Gridfinity can start to mess with your mind. Sooner or later, you'll stop seeing the world around you and start seeing the specially shaped holes you could shove it into. I too have Gridfinity on the brain, but the difference between you and I is that I have 60 spools of filament, a 3D scan of my head, and a very literal sense of humor. I turn my head into a Gridfinity base plate. Behold my three quarter scale visage, even more hollow than the real thing, and fitted with a two by two base plate. It takes 22 hours to print, eats nearly half a reel of filament, but it is the only base plate that enables you to plunge sharp objects into my skull. And that's all for today, but far from all there is. I would like to thank the Gridfinity subreddit and the Gridfinity channel on the Voidstar Discord for recommending far too many models for me to fit into one episode. They're sure to crank out even more so this will not be our last. Of course thanks to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this episode. If you're looking for a top quality gift for a top quality person click the link at the top of the description. While you're there you will find links to every model I featured in this episode as well as templates to design your own. If you're just getting started watch my other Gridfinity videos and check out gridfinity.xyz. I've had a lot of requests to manufacture and sell the Gridfinity, but so far I've decided to say no every single time. I just have no way of ensuring that they'll be able to keep the quality high enough without drawing attention away from my videos. And, uh, well, thanks to you, I don't have to. Voidstar Labs patrons like lab scientists Zariah Binchet, Arashai, and CJ33 allow me to focus on building better projects instead of building revenue streams and writing bad puns instead of writing licensing agreements. Our exceptionally generous collaborators include What the Chuck, Schleppy the Schwagster, The Suits Ruined Our Fun, Creality Online Store, Comer Onet, Caster the Catboy, and Command. You may have noticed their names tucked into an Easter egg, but you probably didn't. Although maybe you did? More likely you didn't. Although my lab assistants continue their slippery slide into a citrus-based shogunate. Give it up for trans rights, Zach. 
Boobakiss, Varka, Protagonist, Birds Aren't Real, Wake Up Sheeple, Bab Stabbington, Good Lady Nat, Queen of Lemons, Victor of the Great Citrus Wars, Cold Dawn, Granville Schmidt, Long Dawn, Dong John Longson, Son of Long John McBongson, no relation, Michael Roche, Oral Nitta, Call Sign Carrot, Sunburnt Cat, Dempsers, Nathan Johnson, mmm, Pussy Nugget, Kyle Fisher, Iron Rain, Bum Tickly 69, Thomas B. Myers, Ethan Gomes, Scroto Sagans, SXP, My Dog is a Bear, Kink Shaming Warless, Burn Duck 3, Max Lux says that'll teach you Epson, Period Clots, Quantum Foam, Bill Schooler, Azunda Wielder of Iron, Hedra of Shrink, Zenforian, Stormby Designs, Acorn, Good Suck, Michael, Cat, 603, Steven, Six Foot, Six Figure, Six Pack, Schulte, Lydia K, Little Bobby Tables, Danny Devoid of Life, A Very Fine Dumpster Fire, yes. Cameron Swords, Mark Zism, The Cuttlefish, Vigeli, Amma the Great, Ryan Guler, Joshua Godovin, Trump Did Nothing Wrong, Rusty Flute, Boulder Creek Air James, Quantumly Tangled, Cullen J. Webb, Vicarious Nerdgasms, The End of Ah, Bob Dobbington, Gary Duvall, Issachai Elf, Mahiro Chan, Destinet, Brad Cox, C.T. Matt, The Benevolent Misanthrope, Ghost of Brad Stormer, Danny McGee, One Handful of Beans, Powerful CCH, Onyx Plague, Talon Democratic Socialist, and a Pretty Righteous Dude, Dash Zach, Dimitri Lair, Ashley Coleman, Eddie, Burn it! Kevin DeGraff, Clifton Henning, and my brother in Google Glass, Roger Pinkham of the Great Star Theater. May your base plates never curl and your dastardly mustachio never straighten. I will see you in the future.